Hey y'all, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush. Thanks for joining me. Right now I have a set of nightstands that were made out of a vintage vanity that was no good anymore. So um, I actually painted them blue and painted a little boy fishing on it and I guess nobody appreciated that as much as I did. So it didn't sell and we've now got the, my grandson Shelton painted a couple of coats of uh, Dixie Belle cotton on there. Whitney's got some Dixie Belle cotton on there. This piece of hardware wouldn't come off. So that's kind of part of what dictates what we're doing, but I think this is what I wanted to do anyway. But we've painted all the other hardware white and we're going to use uh, bells and whistles from Dixie Bell, spring flowers with stems, premium decoupage rice paper on here. And I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell gator hide as my decoupage medium. You could use Mod Podge, you could use satin top coat, a satin clear coat by Dixie Bell is what I normally use and what I would use in this instance, but Whitney's right there working on another project using that and gator hide is what else I have out. But there's a reason for that and let me tell you that. Let me share that tip with you. If you use, this, this is on white paper. I painted this white specifically because I, I love this paper and I wanted to make sure and be able to use it on a project. But if you use Mod Podge or satin top coat or what clear coat as your decoupage medium on here, you can still see the white paper. But when you use Gator Hide as your decoupage medium on there, it makes the paper a little more um, translucent so that doesn't show. But I'm gonna be cutting it out anyway. It would probably be a smarter, more prepared person would probably use a utility knife to cut this out, but I'm just me and this is the way I'm gonna do it. So. You can do that how you want. I wanted this area here to have the flowers on it. I just think it's too dang cute. So now we have to decide where it starts or and how wide it goes. Probably about like that, where it will start here on the bottom. Because if we start these on the bottom like they're coming out of there, it doesn't go very much up the drawer, but it does make more sense in the placement. So I think that's what we're gonna do. And on the bottom here, there are some words. I wish that wasn't on there, but it is on there. So I'm gonna cut that off. It says bells and whistles and the name of the paper and all that brouhaha on there. So let's cut that off first. And then I don't want all of this paper on there and I'm not gonna be so intricate as to um, try to cut out each thing individually. So I'm gonna just kind of go around the flowers sort of a little bit, kind of. <laughs> so that's my method and I'm sticking to it. How long you want to spend on this kind of thing is up to you. You could sit with a pair of tiny scissors and cut out every petal on this. You could leave the whole dang piece of white paper on here if you want to. That's all up to you, but this is what I'm gonna do. Once this dries, I'm gonna come back with a sponge or chip brush, whatever I find handy at the moment. You know, I believe in using what you got right there because this doesn't really necessarily have to have a special tool. Anywho, I'm gonna come back with the cotton paint, dab over the edges of where the paper ends or where the paper's at and blend into it. Now this has a little bit of a, a lip, it's a little bit of a fluted area. This paper will go in there and around there, so I may try that. So what I'm gonna do is cut off the area where the end of the bleed is what it's called, where there's no more picture and it's just excess paper. I'm gonna cut that off so that I don't glue any of that on. And I'll do that same thing, coming back with the cotton to blend over it to where it's a smooth transition and you don't even see that happening. So here we go with the paper. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I love it like that. Does that look good to you, Whitney? coming off of and just going up the drawer a little bit, then we'll have our hardware right here, rather than here, or would it look better there? No, I think it would look great coming off the bottom. And then a little bit on I the think floor. so too, I think so too. 
So move it, get it cut how you want it. You can get yourself out some painter's tape if you want, put it all kinds of areas and try to decide. You could do somewhere in the middle. Let me tell you this real quick. If I was, say, dead set on having these flowers come this far up the drawer, I would go ahead and put this all there and then I would just come back with some olive colored paint and I would extend all those little stems down with a, a, another paintbrush. But we're gonna put it on here this way and we're gonna do it with the gator hide. Then we're gonna blend it back in with the cotton. So we wanna get a good coat, base coat on here to begin with that'll give me something to stick that to. I want to make sure and get in all these corners and crevices and all that really good because it's really important that we get it in those areas really good so that it sticks good in all those indentations and stuff. So let's get that on there. I think it came about up to where the hardware goes, so that's where I'm gonna go with it. Down at the bottom, let's line it up with the bottom. Oh yeah, see how easy that goes on there? Man, that's pretty grab a craft stick of some sort. Let's get those bubbles out. Get up in those corners. All up in them. All up in those corners. Into this indentation. Oh, we got another one right there. Where's the scissors? We're gonna have to cut it to go through right there. Cut it right here around this corner. That is looking good, I tell you. It's not real easy to go into these indentations and around the edges at the same time, so doing it with my thumbnail a little bit. And it's likelihood of it um, wrinkling a little bit is pretty high. So if that, thing, if that kind of thing is really important to you, you should be a little more careful with your cutting and wrapping and going and moving and all the things. But for me, that part's not gonna show. We're gonna blend in with the cotton. So I'm doing the best I can and then we will come back and fix anything else in a minute because it ain't nothing but a thing. Okay, so it's on, and now we put our next coat of gator hide right on top of this, and that helps to smooth it in more as well. Same thing as before, we're working really hard to make sure that it's in all those crevices, corners, indentations, and all that. But you can see when I put on this second coat of gator hide this way, that it's I can see the furniture through there. It, it really lightens up the paper. Make sure and get all of these edges really, really good because we don't want, even if we, there's a wrinkle someplace else, we don't want the edges popping up a little. Then I have a really good coat of this on here. And then I'm in all those creases really good because you know this drawer's not going to open until we let this dry and we come back and cut that seam and then I will sand a little bit at that seam and then if it needs some cotton over it to help blend those edges which it will up here for sure I'll do that and then put some more top coat over it and it's done I feel like I've got a bubble right there and I don't know if it's just something I see in the paper or if it's a bubble it's something under there okay so that's it, I'll come back when this dries and we'll cut it and I'll show you the blending around the edges. I have a utility knife, let's hope it's sharp. A piece of sandpaper, this is just one of the ones that goes on my random orbital sander. Cotton, I hope there's a dab left in here, and a chip brush. 
We absolutely know we're going to have to cut between the drawer and the cabinet. I hope this is dry enough because it's not 100% dry and I don't want the paper to rip, which could happen. But I think I might cut out a couple of these smaller flowers to go right in the middle of the hardware. But for right now, you can barely see this, but you can see it. So now I've cut that to where the drawer should open pretty easily. The rest of this looks good. We'll use the sandpaper. Straighten the edge down here. Using a chip brush here because that's what I had handy. Getting some of this on the bottom. And it looks painted on there. I'm going to do the same thing around the edge over here. Covering up some of it just to kind of blend it in. I think we will still distress a little bit. Let's, let's try that and see if we're going to like it. And if not, we'll go back over it with a little bit more paint. This is a 120 grit. No, this is an 80 grit. So this is a pretty strong sandpaper. I like it just like that. That's distressed enough, I think, um, to where it can be top coated and it just looks old. And I absolutely will cut off a couple of the small flowers to put in there in all likelihood. That may overdo it, but let's see. I think it I think it's cute. Cute, 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 cute. Okay. So that's how you do it. Thank you for watching and tune back in every Tuesday and Thursday for more videos and subscribe, click the little button to be notified and I'll see you on the next video. And if you do this project, I would love if you would uh, visit me on social, uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush, art by Terry Stovall on Facebook or Terry at sisterhoodoftetravelingbrush.com. Email me a picture of your project. I would love to see it. Thanks. Bye.